This video is about safety in the design, manufacture and use of products. This comes up quite a lot in exams and it also appears in your controlled assessment where you're asked to discuss about health and safety but also provide risk assessment documents as part of your A2 coursework. Some of the key legislation that you might need to know to basically bulk up some of your A2 answers if this question comes up is the Health and Safety Work Act of 1974 the Personal Protective Clothing Regulations of 2002, and the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health, or COSH as it's sometimes abbreviated to, also of 2002. So it's useful to know a little bit about these acts and what they kind of mean, but effectively in the workplace, the manufacturer has to place certain rules in place to ensure that the workers are safe within their environment and there's no particular problems. The Control of Substances Hazardous to Health, or COSH as it's sometimes abbreviated to, obviously is relating to the storage and safe use of dangerous substances, things that uh, perhaps have solvents in them. You may well have at your school a, a cupboard or locked box, effectively, that stores certain substances that might be damaging to the health, because as we know, by breathing in certain substances, there's, there's a potential that there might be carcinogens involved or they will definitely have uh, volatile organic compounds within them that are not particularly good for your respiratory system. Now, in addition to COSH, training needs to be provided. So we need to make sure that all the employees are trained in the safe operation of the equipment or the tooling that they're going to use. And it might involve certain employees might have to take safety courses and be tested against standards to pr provide competence within using tools. And you, you may have even gone through this as part of your product design course where the instructor or the teacher has taken you through the use of, say, I don't know, a pillar drill or a laser cutter or something like this. So you know the safe use of the machines. In addition to this, health and safety executive, so someone sort of setting out the, the safety policies and ensuring safety within manufacturing places or checking safety, might also need to be checking and ensuring that guards are in place on certain equipment. So again, you'll have seen this in your workshop environment. If we take the example of a pillar drill again, you'll notice that the pillar drill will have a guard on the front of it to ensure that swarf and particulates from drilling do not fly into the eyes of the person working the machine. Similarly, a band facer, for example, might have a guard that can be lowered or raised in order to suit the, the piece of material that you are abrading. In addition to this, depending on what tasks uh, need to be undertaken, personal protective clothing or equipment, or PPE as it's often abbreviated to, is often specified for various different tasks. And again, you can acknowledge this within your own practice. So for example, again using the pillar drill, you will obviously be asked to apply protective safety goggles or perhaps a head shield when you're using this tool to ensure that swarf doesn't fly off and strike your eyes. If you are using a BAM face or something that produces dust, you might be asked to wear a dust mask. And obviously as part of this, they will ensure that extraction is available within the workshop as well to also remove any particulates that wouldn't be nice to breathe in or would be bad for your respiratory system. So PPE is obviously important in various different situations. But again, this is very specific to the tools you're using. So again, talking about the pillar drill, it's useful to wear goggles or a safety visor or something like this or a head shield. However, we wouldn't want to be wearing gloves, which might get caught up in the machine and be particularly dangerous. However, if we was using, say, a vacuum forming machine where we'll be handling hot plastics or hot polymers, we might be wearing gloves for that, but probably wouldn't need the visors or the, the safety goggles because we're not, we're not at risk from flying particulates or anything like that. Now, in addition to this, as I touched on before, risk assessment would obviously need to be carried out. And again, this covers many of these areas. So hazardous substances, the training of uh, students and staff, or in, in this case, manufacturers, the guarding of machines and the wearing and storage of personal protective equipment and access to this equipment is obviously going to be very important as well. So prior to undertaking an activity, it's important to assess the risks that are in place and then, you know, address how likely these risks are to happen and then have measures in place to counter these risks or reduce the impact of them if they in fact happen. And, and finally, what I did talk about before was extraction. So when we're using things like uh, a laser cutter, which when vaporizing materials produces gases and um, 
in some cases flying particulates that we could breathe in we need to have adequate extraction for this and as I talked about before using a BAM facer or a linisher we will need to make sure that extraction is in place there and as I said this links potentially to protective equipment where you're using respirators or dust masks to reduce the risk even further. There's a lot of things there so we talked about cosh, training, guarding of machines, PPE, risk assessment and extraction and there's quite a lot to remember, but what I like to use is the sentence, gosh, train guards personally risk extraction. Now, if I remember that, I can link gosh to kosh, and then train is training, guards, which is the garden of machines, personally, which is the personal protective equipment, risk, as in risk assessment, and extraction, the extraction of dust or particulates from the environment. So when I'm thinking about this, or if I've got to answer a question on safety within an exam, or I've got to talk about it within my project as part of my planning, I could cover all of these areas and remember it by that, that little sentence, gosh, train guards personally risk extraction. I did discuss a little bit about risk assessment before, and it's likely you're going to have to produce a risk assessment document for your controlled assessment for your coursework project. So I would suggest that when you are designing this, that you have certain aspects in place. And these are, we list the kind of hazards that might be presented when we are manufacturing our particular project. And it's very important to be quite specific to the environment that you're working in and the actual tools and equipment that you'll be using as in your project. Very personal this. We wouldn't have a generic risk assessment document that would cover everything. We want to work out what the level of risk for the various different hazards might be. So some risks might be more likely to occur than others and they might affect different types of people. In addition to this, we want to set out the control measures that are in place. Now, these measures will ensure that the chance of these risks occurring is reduced to an absolute minimum. So if we're talking about, for example, dust extraction, we might be educating the people using the tools as to what the risks are. We might be giving them personal protective equipment and we might be ensuring that there is filtering and extraction in place within the environment. We might also be checking and ensuring that this extraction is maintained and updated on a regular basis, perhaps once, uh, once every six weeks or something like this to ensure that it is working at its optimum capacity. In addition to this, we need to address the fact whether additional methods could or perhaps should be implemented. So if we need to make any improvements, and often with these risk assessments, dates and signatures are taken to confirm at what time, who and when is making these assessments. So when I talked about dust extraction, you are thinking about checking this and maintaining this equipment on a regular basis. Now, in addition to this, we talked about safety in manufacturing. We also have to think about safety with the consumer or the user of the product. Now, some key legislation, which again might bulk up your answers or that you should be aware of, are number one, the Electrical Equipment Safety Regulations of 1994 and the Plugs and Sockets Regulation also of 1994. There are obviously many other legislations or directives that would be put in place by the European Union, for example, that cover a wide range of areas such as general product safety, the safety of machines, especially the safety of toys, for example, noise emissions from domestic products and, and also things like power tools and low voltage electrical equipment. And it's making sure that the consumer is aware that these tests have been taken place and what you can look for on products to ensure that they've met some of these standards and we know that they're going to be safe are some of the quality standards that you might be familiar with. Now, you might have seen the CE mark or Conformité Européenne, as in conforming to European standards, that's CE, or the BSI Kite mark for the British Standards Institution. And if you know that these products have got these marks on them, then you are aware that they've, they're have they generally safe for use and they're going to be a, a better quality product. So as a user or a consumer, you might be looking for some of these safety or quality marks to ensure that your product's going to be a good quality and a safe product to use. In respects to toy safety, you may have also seen the lion mark, which is looks like a small cartoon lion. And there are many other sort of safety safety requirements or sorry safety standards that you might be aware of with different kite marks and different regulations and all of these are in place effectively number one to protect the user but also for the company it's going to be very beneficial because it ensures that they're going to gain additional satisfaction from their consumers and perhaps additional purchases because their consumers are aware that their products have passed these standards.